You need to change these PS4 settings right now to make sure you are getting the most out of your console. Changing these settings will greatly improve your PS4's performance, efficiency and even unlock new features you may not have known existed. Let's do this! First things first, go to your PS4 settings. Now for the first setting to change, go to accessibility and then go to zoom and then enable zoom. This now lets you to hold down the PS button in square at the same time on your controller to zoom into any part of the screen whilst playing games or just chilling in the menu. This means you'll be able to see things in the distance you might not be able to see without zooming in, so it can actually give you an advantage in games. This is a really cool feature that a lot of people don't know about. Now for the second setting, continue working down the menu and go to login settings and then enable signing into your account automatically. I only do this if you are the main user on the PS4, but what this will do is when you turn on your PS4 next time, you can just go straight into gaming on your account instead of having to waste time going through the user select menu. Setting number 3 to change is in your notification settings. Go to notifications and then disable pop-ups whilst playing video. Now you won't have to keep getting distracted with PlayStation notifications when you are just trying to watch something like Netflix or YouTube on your PS4. The fourth setting to change will double your controller's battery life, so you definitely want to make sure you change this. Go to Devices, then Controllers, and then change the brightness of the DualShock 4 light bar to dim. It's a shame you can't officially turn this off, but by putting this to dim, battery life is greatly extended and the light is a lot more subtle when you're playing in the dark. For the fifth setting, go to Sound and Screen Settings and then change it so that the screensaver starts after 5 minutes of inactivity. This means you will be using less power when you are AFK and lowers the chances of any damage happening to your TV by leaving a static image on screen. Whilst you are in Sound and Screen, also make sure you have all of the video and sound settings set accordingly to get the best performance out of your audio device and your display. Leaving everything on automatic should give the best quality from your devices. The seventh setting can be found in sharing and broadcasting options and you want to change the button type to easy screenshots instead of standard. This makes it a lot easier to be able to take screenshots instantaneously and capture a perfect moment from the game rather than having to hold it down or do it manually in the menu. Setting number 8 is also in the sharing and broadcasting menu, but this time you want to go to video clip settings and then change the length all the way down to 30 seconds and make sure the dimensions are set at the lowest quality available. I only change these if you do not use the feature frequently, but by changing this you should see a performance increase on your PS4. The ninth setting is in the same menu under screenshot settings, and here you want to select the highest possible dimensions and also change the format to PNG. This is going to ensure your screenshots are all of the best possible quality. For setting number 10, go to power saving settings and then change the time until the controller turns off to after 10 minutes of inactivity. This is another setting that should really improve the battery life of your controller so you can play for as long as you like. Setting number 11 is also in the power saving setting menu, as is setting number 12. Go to set features available in rest mode and then make sure that the USB ports are given power whilst in rest mode. This means you will be able to charge things using your PS4 USB ports whilst the PS4 is in standby. Now go down and make sure that the keep application suspended option is enabled. This means you will be sent straight back to where you were in your game the moment you turn your PS4 back on from standby, so you won't have to go through all those boot up screens and load screens. Settings 13, 14 and 15 can all be found by going to the system settings. One setting to change here is to enable HDMI device link, which will allow your PS4 to turn on when you turn your TV on and turn off when you turn your TV off. This also works the other way around so if you were to turn your PS4 on with a controller, it will start up the TV alongside it which is really cool. It's also possible that your TV controller may also work on your PS4 with this enabled. The other two settings are in the automatic download section and for the first you want to turn off featured content. This will stop all of those ads popping up on your home screen and then for the second turn on application update files which means all your games will be updated automatically whilst your PS4 is in rest mode and they will be ready for you to play when you turn on your PS4 next. And for the 16th setting to change, if you are a PS4 Pro owner, go to system settings and then enable boost mode which will improve frame rate and resolution across most of your games. If you want to learn all you can about PlayStation and get involved with great 
discussions regarding PS4 and PS5, then please make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss another one of my uploads. I have a load of really cool stuff coming when the PS5 launches that you really don't want to miss. Also leave a comment on this video letting me know which of these settings helped you out the most and I will definitely reply as I always do. If you want to know if you should upgrade to a PS5 from a PS4 then click the video on screen now. But anyway that's all for me in this video and I'll see you in the next one.